Today is Saturday, April 7th, 2018. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Listener Feedback Show for Survivor Ghost Island, Week 6, Episode 7. Juicy little slice of a yellow ripe watermelon. I think oh that might Lord. be it. You think that's it? No. Doesn't that sound right? Juicy little slice of a yellow ripe watermelon. Well, it certainly s- sounds better than your belly button theory, but... You don't want to know what I put in my belly button. Yeah. No, hmm. I think you're warped, is what I think. <laughs> Yeah, she had something different to say before but we started recording. But it's annoying recording. because now I'm listening to it. <laughs> That's right. We did our test, and you weren't paying attention. You didn't. You didn't come in when you're supposed to. Yeah, I know. Because you're like, thinking dang, about what I was did she say? About that. <laughs> so now you have me obsessing about it. You know who I <laughs> want to know what they said. The other super fans. Yes, let's let's do that one. Uh huh. Yeah. Let's check in with some Survivor Super fans and see what they thought about the results from week six. How many folks we got this week? Nineteen. Nineteen. We're going to get started with Pete. Let's see if he liked it. What do you think? I think he will. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Pete from Boston calling here. Yes, baby. This was a fantastic episode. This is what I've been waiting for. Let's let out a great big... Baby, oh, let now sing with me. Na 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. goodbye, goodbye. B- 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 Bradley. Bradley. B- b- Bradley, you egotistical goof. That's what you get. <laughs> you, you. Maybe you'll have better luck when you come back another time. You let your ego get the better of you, Bradley, and you're blindsided out of there. Ooh. That was a great episode, guys, and Bradley had it coming. But honestly, based on the edit, I still didn't think it was him. I really thought Dominic was going to make maybe the better strategic move and get rid of Libby. Because as we've seen, Libby is clearly a great strategist and a very good social player. But no, he got rid of Bradley because he didn't trust um, uh, his just his craziness all over the place. Wow. I don't know. We'll see. I'm a little bit worried, though, if Dom and Chelsea, if they made the right move there. We'll see soon enough as it's the merge time. But I want to get into, guys, finally, we're going to see this Dom and Chris rivalry go head-to-head. Who are they going to have aligned with them? Where is Wendell and Laurel going to go? Where is Donathan going to go? It's it's madness now. Is Kellen going to go back with Dom? You know? Oh, we'll see Desiree. You know, I don't know what's going to happen, guys. All this back and forth. But I was happy that Malolo won, finally. And they have, by the way, a better record than Fuller Forward did. And Tendang and Oolong for some of the weaker tribes. Good for Michael to find that idol. Who would have ever thought that, that a fake idol would become a real idol? Let's see if Michael can break the curse this time. And how about Eric's? some idol when he gave it to Natalie Bolton there. Kudos to Wendell. He's got some game in him, too. We'll see how he plays that idol. And Kellen finding an advantage at Ghost Island. Finally, something worked out at Ghost Island. But we'll see if it works out for Kellen, guys. All right, this episode was awesome. Had everything you wanted. Advantages found. Great gameplay. Pretty good challenges. I love it. My question for you you guys, Joanne and Stacey, is who's going to go with Dom? Who's going to be with Chris? And did Dom make a mistake in getting rid of Bradley and, and not Libby there? Because I think Libby could form an alliance with Chelsea and some of those other girls, too, with Kellen and Desiree. We'll see. I want to know what you guys think and everyone else. 
great episode and take care. Woo! Thanks, Pete. Yeah, I, I think they may, I, they may have made a mistake in not getting rid of Libby. Um, I don't think so. Anyone who has the power to, to like heal a cold sore that quickly. <laughs> That's that's dangerous power Libby possesses. I'm not saying there. Libby's not dangerous, mm-hmm. but I don't. I I'm still happy they got rid of Brad, and I don't. Well, that's necessarily why you're saying think that. that it's going to hurt them in any way. I believe they can smooth things over with Kellen, and I think Wendell might still prefer to play with Dom. Mm-hmm. And now they both have idols, Dom and Wendell. Yep. And um, so. I don't just don't know who's on Chris's side. I don't know if Sebastian will stay with Chris or if he and Jenna will go a different direction. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe stay with Wendell and Dominic. And so I, I don't know how that's going to play out yet. It would certainly make my vote off easier for next week if I did know. But I don't. Dominic know. would have to goof up really, really bad to lose that battle. Yeah. Well, given all the power that he's sitting on well, with an idol he definitely and the has some, in play. He has some time to um, get in with other people in the Alliance because he can use his legacy advantage this week so he's safe. And the next Tribal Council, he could use his um, other idol. And so that gives him more time to build alliances. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I just I don't I don't see Chris winning that exchange. He'd have to. Mm-mm. Too many people don't like him. Yeah, it, his ego, not him, is his ego. <laughs> well, okay. I don't know that you can separate. Well, those let's two. just leave it at that. <laughs> oh. Let's be nice. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was a tactical error leaving Libby in. Okay. Yep. We'll see. And Dominic's going to win against Chris, but Dominic will win because of, well, he's got the insurance to stay in, but he'll win because someone else decides that he'll win. That's what, do what I think. What do you mean by win? He, he'll he still be in the game. He'll be in the game longer than Chris. So you're not saying he'll win the season? Oh, no. No, well, I don't think well, that at all. Well, when you say win. No, well, the you... context clues. We're talking about the face-off with Dominic and Chris. Okay, good. <laughs> That's clearer. Thanks. Now. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Next up, we got an email from Myra in Kentucky. Myra says, Finally, we had a move other than the boring pagonging and the fact that they took out the most obnoxious player other than the duo of Chris and his ego was a bonus. But first, let's go back to Malolo. Michael finally decides to look for an idol, which I'm sure they've all been doing, but the editors don't show us unsuccessful hunts. That's exactly right. He finds an idol, and it's the infamous beep stick. <laughs> okay, beep stick, that works too. That right there, beep. just pretty sure Eliza Orleans went off on Twitter, so I'm sure that would be hilarious. This gives Michael the one thing he hasn't had in a long time, hope. Then we get to the reward challenge. I noticed they've tweaked it since we saw it last time. They made it so one person can run the challenge. Obviously, Yanuya and Naviti won, but it was very interesting that Naviti chose Donathan as their anchor. That shows me that not only is he growing into a much bigger character, but his fellow Navitis are trusting his abilities more. Yanuya actually was able to make a decision in sending Kellen to Ghost Island, and she was rewarded by a 2 out of 3 advantage. She's now got an extra vote, so will she make the right call insofar as knowing when to use it? I don't think the extra vote has been used correctly yet, so history is against her, but we'll see. Going back after the reward, Malolo decided to burn the tribe flag as a way to negate the Oolong curse that's been hanging over them. Judging by the immunity challenge result, it worked. Michael put forth a superhuman effort, especially considering that they have not been able to partake in a single food reward. I do almost wonder if Donathan and Dominic were low-key trying to throw the challenge to get rid of Bradley. So I can tell you that there's no indication of that whatsoever in the extra videos. (laughs) So no, I don't think that's the case. Dominic seemed way more clumsy in the water than I remember him being. Bradley getting voted out was a surprise because I thought Dominic would keep him as a goat and go for the easy vote out with the blonde chick. Honestly, we've seen so little of the non-Malolo females, they're all interchangeable in my book. So bye, Bradley. You are almost as self-absorbed as Chris. 
Speaking of Chris, next week the merge and we get teased with the long-awaited showdown of Chris versus Dominic. Which alliance will reign supreme or will we settle back into the pagonging? I hope someone ha has the sense to gather up the Malolo stragglers and make a move. Later. Thanks, Myra. Next up, we got a call from Shay. Hey guys, this is Shay. What an episode. I just loved so much about it. I love all the idols that are in play right now. I mean, it's almost impossible to predict how things can possibly go. And I love that the merge is coming. That also just throws the game in a whole other direction. I love that Michael has an advantage and a new opportunity to make connections. I love that Chris and Dom are fixing to have to fight that out. I've been waiting. Oh, Chris. Oh. You know, I feel like I feel the same way about Callan. I don't know why. I don't know that she has said anything specifically that rubs me the wrong way. There's just something about the vibe she puts out that... I feel like if I had to sit next to her at work, I would hate going to work. I, I don't know. I don't know that I've seen Libby get to play yet enough to determine how much I like her as a survivor player. But I'm anxious to see. I think Desiree's got some game. I'm going to watch that happen. I can tell you this, though. Tribal Council, when Bradley went home, I was pulling a peat all over my house. I think it's the first person that's been voted off that I was just ecstatic to see go. I literally was hopping all over the house. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, yeah! I was so excited. My husband was like, calm down. I was like, you calm down. Bradley's out. I was so, so excited. I really loved your show after. You guys brought up a lot of things that I didn't even think about. I just can't stress enough how much it adds to the show of Survivor. I mean, Survivor, Survivor, it's already so good on its own. And if somebody would have told me, you know, five years ago, you're going to run into this podcast that's going to make Survivor even better, I'd have been like, okay, whatever. But it does. I love this show almost as much as I love Survivor. I cannot wait to hear what everybody else has to say. I know everybody's got to be as excited as I am that Bradley is gone. See when he's gone. <laughs> you guys have a great day, and we will talk soon. Bye. All right. Thanks, Shay. Appreciate that. Yeah, I think you, it's that cold, dark Kellen. I'm telling you, you, when you watch her shove Desiree off that ramp into the water, you see the true, <laughs> true cold, dark Kellen moment there. That's, yeah. that's what you're, you're picking up on, I think. I think she just wanted to win, and Desiree, I'm not sure she was going to jump. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying, but I think uh, Kellen just gave her a little little, little help there. Mm -hmm. So you're coming to Kellen's defense. Okay, good deal. Thanks again, Shay. Next up, we got a call from Sophie and Leela. Hi, Gemini and Stacy. Hi, Survivor fans. It's great to hear you all each week. I am here with my sick daughter. She has a fever. Do you want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> okay. How do you think Chris did this week? Pretty good. He wasn't as annoying, but Brandon was. No, Bradley. Oh, Bradley. Brandon, Bradley. I'm reading a book with a boy named Brandon. Oh. <laughs> well, Brandon was already in it, and he was already voted out. Uh -huh. Who else did well this week? Michael. His swimming was amazing. Wow, I could watch him dive all day. It was just like a... Like a what? A dolphin. dolphin. <laughs> Remember that person that dived, but then he split his legs like halfway, halfway through the dive? Was it Dominique? Was it a boy? So. Yeah. I am so underwhelmed with Desiree. Like, she can't do any good challenges. She Terrible. has got no game in her. She wasn't going after Michael. And <sighs> oh, seriously, I was thinking maybe I should pick her. But now, I don't know, maybe I'm going to pick Michael to win or even Dominic because he's got the advantages and idols. I don't know. Kellen played, but she's just not a great player. I don't want her to win. Yeah, I agree with you, Stacey, um, Joanne. There's just something about her that's stopping us bonding from Kellen. But mm. Wendell, I think play of the week, probably Wendell. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Wendell, because he's playing hard and but keeping it down. He doesn't seem like a big threat. And lose of the week, yeah, Desiree, just because I already said why. <laughs> Excited about the merge. Yes, we can finally see challenges that are individual and then there'll be rewards that they can go on 
in groups and then they can sort of bond and hopefully find idols on those rewards that's always exciting so yeah i think next week's going to be fantastic and hopefully you'll be feeling better yeah you'll be feeling better yeah okay have you got anything to say about the immunity idols i was surprised when a um reward um immunity necklace became an idol and this stick (laughs) (laughs) this stick yeah it suddenly became powerful huh stick So we're wondering if Michael will, I don't know, somehow use it, pretending that making others making others think that he thinks that it's an idol so that they're really laughing behind his back. Like, didn't he watch the show? Okay, let him use it. It's not going to work. But then when he actually does go to use it, they'll be laughing. But then the joke will be on them because it will actually save him. Oh, I really hope that he uses it in a good way. So I think I'm rooting for Michael to win. All of it. I'm hoping, just because he's a nice person and he doesn't seem big-headed or anything. Okay, I think that's it. Say bye. 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 we got to go. Aww. Take care. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. Good job. Hope you get Feel well soon. Feel better, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Desiree does have game. She's got game. She's got the, the social strategic game. She in your does, humble opinion. She does not have game in the water. Water is not no. her strength, Mm-mm. so... Yeah, but we've seen her do good in other challenges <clears throat> where she made a big contribution. And we've seen her not. I do tell good you, in other challenges what I would too. say about that though is that um, even though she had some trepidation going off that height, she doesn't hesitate to get in there. I uh, mean, actually, yes, yeah, she, she did. She did. Technically, she did. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, she's doing it. Uh, you just said Kellen pushed her in. But she's doing it, right? She got in that one challenge where she had to run out and then be on the um, bodyboard and get pulled back. Well, of she course did it. she's doing it. Yeah. Well, she didn't freeze up the way James did and completely fail. True. True. So she's... She did mess up the puzzle. I guess I'll say she's brave. She does have hesitation. Mm-hmm. But she's definitely brave to keep going back out there. At okay. It. Enough defense of Desi. Next up, we got an email from Beth in Virginia. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. It's been a while since I've written in, but I've been enjoying all the podcasts and other listener feedback. I wish your interviews... I with, miss. I miss your interviews with the Voted Off Castaways and hope that they might come back in the future season, unless you're enjoying the extra free time. I'm really liking the season so far, and I'm hoping Ghost Island becomes more important after the merge. I picked Wendell for my USB and love him, or at least his edit so far. The main thing I wanted to discuss is Bradley. He's the worst. (laughs) The end. Just kidding. I recently finished rewatching Sherlock on Netflix and highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't watched it yet. There's just something about Bradley's voice that reminds me of how Moriarty speaks in the BBC version, Sherlock. If you or any listeners are unfamiliar with the character, he is an evil mastermind and Sherlock's arch enemy. Arch. Okay, whatever. Here's a link to some clips with Moriarty. We're going to play it after, right? If other people don't hear the similarity between Bradley and Moriarty, I guess I was just associating the evilness of the two of them. That's all I have to contribute this week. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. All right. Thanks, Beth. Stacy's going to play the audio. Jim Moriarty. Oh, I really make such a fleeting impression. I don't like getting my hands dirty. Sherlock, just a teensy glimpse of what I've got going on out there in the big bad world. I'm a specialist, you see. Yeah, but it's the same thing as the the Thurston Howell character. It's the affectation that Bradley has, just like that Moriarty actor in the underbite. There's something about the way the you the, the, the way you hold your teeth when you've got the underbite like that, and yeah, and it's I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's an affectation with Bradley. Well, yeah, but he always Which looks like he smells something saying, bad too. He's got that. Well, I think that's part of that underbite kind of thing too. Oh, well, the maybe. way the way the mouth is being held and yeah, yeah. smells like it doesn't I dispose it doesn't like predispose you to a smile. That's for sure. Okay. It's not a. It's like yeah, he's got resting stink face or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that, Beth. Yeah. Good deal. Next up, we got a call from Rajmi. Hello, Joanne and Stacy, and all my survival friends. So Bradley's gone, and Joanne, you got a vote of point. 
Great. Lots of people wanted to see Bradley gone, but really, shouldn't he have been kept? He being the most annoying person and for Dominic, he would have been a perfect shield or better still, a really good goat. Remember Philip Shepard and how very, very annoying he was and Rob M still kept him by his side. Um, then I also heard that actually Dominic most probably through the challenge to get rid of um, Bradley but who knows that's what I heard now that immunity idol necklace is massive how are they going to transport it <laughs> I think a good way would be to just fold it up and then wrap it up in maybe his old clothes and shove it in the bag I don't know and thank god those players have got their bathers really it was high time however some of them cover even less than what they were wearing previously and I always worry when the girls when they go sliding down the slides you know in the water whether they're going to get a wedgie or whatever I, I still can't understand what Jonathan says I'm sorry now I have an interesting question to ask the spiel we heard when they found the effing steak the one Eliza got voted out on and then there was this story they said that oh and it's been living on this island for the last 10 years I have a question how did that effing steak travel 5,534 kilometers from Palau to Fiji ghost island did it magically beam itself there did it swim across did it go uh, like a message in a bottle or maybe she went on a magic carpet. I don't know. But I found that really funny. Anyway, who do you think goes next? I think it's going to be either Chris or Libby. And I really do hope it's Libby because, gosh, can't stand her. Till next time. Bye now. Thanks, Rajmi. But the answer to that question is quite simple, Rajmi. It's the survivor gods are responsible for transporting it over such vast distances although at times they do dispatch the demigods the winners from previous survivor seasons on errands like that i'm not even gonna comment <laughs> what's wrong with that didn't you like that um, next <laughs> the, the head shake says no okay <laughs> next up we got a call from chris hey joanna stacy hey survivor fans Hope everybody's having a great season. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. I had a good idea for a ghost island advantage. You could go out there and, you know, if you knocked open the right piece of bamboo, out of nowhere would come your companion dog, Ben. And when you went back to the island, Ben would just go out and find hidden immunity idols for you. My other thought was that if Donna Than and Desiree had a child, they could name it Death Array. Joanna Stacy, I've been watching Survivor That's a long good. time since the first season. I came in about five or six episodes in. I've got a funny little story about a blind side on the first season. I was in a band. I'd started a band with a friend of mine. We were playing Beatles and Crowded House and that kind of stuff. And we let a couple other musicians in, and they were playing more blues band kind of stuff. And, you know, th that's good. That, that's not why I started a band. And my good friend, he went up northeast to teach during the summer, and I was without my alliance. So I worked with the tribe, and all summer long, you know, I worked out their songs. We were real tight. I'm a drummer, percussionist. We were jamming. It was great. But we couldn't settle on a name, and when we came up with a name, my tribe mate, my ally, wouldn't respond, and he didn't like it. And Anyway, when he got back into town, they wanted to meet with us. Well, anyway, oh, this is the funny part. Early in the rehearsals, we went out, and we'd rehearse into the night. This guy lived in the country, and he had this nice trail through the woods, and he had torches lit up, and he was telling me about this new game, and I'd heard about it. He was saying it's an island where these millionaires go, and nobody really understood what it was, of course, that first summer. He said, what they do is you go in to talk to a camera, and your face is in the light, and you hold up a piece of paper, and you say, you're dead. 
And so he was, we were laughing about that. Isn't that funny? That's great. It was a nice setting and everything. So anyway, when we had that band meeting, they told us we were out of the band. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. <laughs> so you got blindsided, huh? Death Array. I like that. Good deal. Thanks, Chris. Next up, we got an email from Mike in Omaha. Through my own personal filter, I say, compared to last season, Ghost Island still sucks. <laughs> now, having said that, this week finally gave us fans a lot of stuff we've been secretly dreaming of. Michael and Wendell, arguably the two most likable players, find hidden idols, and uppity Brad goes home. On a personal level, I'm happy to see Brad gone. He said several times that Spencer got his spot back in Kagiyan. Well, while the two share some similarities, Spencer's more likable. Spencer is sympathetic to others and far more emotionally intelligent. And I'm not saying this just because Spencer struggled from the get-go, whereas Brad had it easy. However, I think he was great casting. After listening to an exit interview, I think Brad is not the villain that has been fed to us. Brad is a law student, not an interpersonal relationship student, clearly. But on a JSFL level, it killed me. I had Libby going home, and I, along with Joanne, was so sure she was toast. I was all ready to feel self-satisfied for the second week in a row. This is the first time this season it made me go slack-jawed. I could barely hear my own thoughts over the triumphant cries of happiness from the friends and family I was watching with around me. <laughs> now more than ever, I wish I'd gone with my spidey sense and picked Michael as my USB, but my brain told me to stay the course with Kellen. So, we'll see how that plays out. I'm a sucker for that 24-point bonus, so I won't be changing. I've got to hope for the best with Kellen, even though I'm very neutral on her. I think she's a decent enough player, but the people I actually like are Michael, Desiree, and Wendell. I feel like CBS is setting Wendell up as a clear winner, so if anyone wants a new USB, I think he'd be a prudent choice. I don't know how he'll ever be able to keep his secret idol secret due to its gigantic size. And no one asked my opinion, but it got brought up while I was watching this episode. Libby is attractive, but to me, Dez and the Stephanies, especially Gonzalez, are the smoke bombs of the season. And another random thought. I've found Probst less annoying the last couple of episodes, and I have no idea why. I think it's because he's backed off the... How does it make you feel a little bit over the last two? Maybe a, a smidge? I think it's good Angela survived to the merge. I wouldn't have predicted that whatsoever. Oftentimes, the people like her, who don't show a lot of game strategy, end up being the most pivotal votes of the entire season. Donathan is annoying me, but only because of his edit. I feel like I'm being force-fed him and supposed to cheer for him, which automatically makes me want to rebel. I'm in that same boat with you there, brother. I'm so ready to see Chris go. He's annoying. To a lesser degree, Libby, Sebastian, Donathan and maybe Jenna all need to leave. They aren't going to do anything strategic, so even if they're nice, go home already. Happy for the merge, but it would be nice if it would come at a more unexpected time for no other reason than I like variety. That is also why I am so crushed that they're staying in Fiji ad nauseum. Thanks, Joanna and Stacy, for all you do, putting together a great show. Thank you, Mike, for being a big part of that. Next up, we've got a clip from Marla Yay! and Sarah. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Hi, Survivor friends. This is Marla. And this is Sarah. With our very, very late feedback, we miss you all, and we hope everyone's doing well. We are doing well here, except for one thing. Sarah is now a tween, and she really wants to express the one piece of feedback she has about Survivor and pretty much the rest of life. Grown-ups are so stupid. Okay, then. So um, <laughs> I'm sure you can just fill in who that refers to. We hope to have some more specific feedback soon, and we hope all is well. Joanne and Stacy. thank you for all you do, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. All right. Good to hear your voice again. Oh, Sarah, you haven't plumbed the depths of stupid yet. You just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Boys and men, I'll show you a whole new spectrum of stupid throughout your lifetime. <laughs> That's what you got to look forward to. <laughs> okay, next up, we got a call from Drew. He's lone wolf in it today. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. Hey, everyone. This is Drew flying solo tonight. Just another busy day tomorrow, and I don't think we'll have a spare minute in the morning, and then I think I'd just forget by the time the deadline rolled around. So, some quick feedback. I thought this was a great episode. I think that it was 
good to see lots of idle excitement and of course something finally happened on Ghost Island so that's going to be a big topic of conversation. I won't get into it but I think it's funny when um, I was reading through some comments on Facebook and stuff and everyone's like, I can't believe no one's looking for idols. And I said, look, just because they're not showing them looking for idols doesn't mean they're not looking for idols. Almost the only time they ever even show someone looking is when they actually find it, which makes it seem like, you know, the people who are looking always find it. But it's just, you know, it's all in the edit. But anyway, lots of cool idols in play and it'll be fun to see how they play out. I think Dominic is just great, you guys. I know there's the USB blindness going on, but I just don't know where the dislike for him is coming from. I don't think he's especially arrogant in his game compared to many of the others. I think that he's personable and I think that people like him and so I don't know, I don't understand the dislike for Dominic except that maybe people don't like his personality or something. Anyway, good challenges, good episode. As for Risk It for the Biscuit, when she said that I thought, didn't Wes, I think it was, Wes Nail say that back in the, what was it, Blood vs. Water or whatever with, um, you know, Keith's son. I think he said that once and it was kind of a notable quote, so it was interesting to hear that. Fairly odd phrase come prominently into play again. So yeah, still liking Wendell, Dominic, Michael, and then that's about it. That's all I really like right now, so we'll see what happens. I think I'm probably gonna, we got a merge coming up, but I think I'm gonna stick with Dominic, you guys. I see him in the finals, I don't exactly see him winning, but I... I still like him, so I think I'm probably going to stick with him. So the winner of the week, I'm going to give it to Michael. That guy's scrappy. I think he has a chance. I, I'm going to actually be kind of bummed if he doesn't make it to the end. Loser of the week, Sebastian, because that guy is skeezy. Can't get over it. That's about it for now. Talk to you all later. Hope everyone had a really nice Easter, and have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, Drew. Next up, we've got an email from Judy in San Diego. Hello, Joanne and Stacy. I wanted to give a bit of feedback from this week's episode regarding Michael and his latest idol find. He so impressed me with James's cursed idol play and how he presented the falsity of it, saving two people from being voted off. With his find of the cursed fake idol, now a real idol, I would love to see him create an identical, as much as possible, fake stick idol and present it to just one player as a real idol. He'd have to target a lesser fan, probably. I think it would bring us some great entertainment with the possibilities and how great it would be to see success in a new way of how to use it as an idol. Here it is, middle of the season, and I hadn't done any feedback, and I wanted to. I'm enjoying this season and most of the cast. I appreciate the disappointment with regards to Ghost Island's seemed promises, but I do love the relics and the retelling of the cursed plays thoroughly. I have loved this game from the start, and the reminiscing back to older seasons is fun. I have no idea who's getting voted off this next week. Chris seems to be a good possibility every week, although with him still there, it is leading me to believe he will make it to the end, but not winning. I think Dominic and Chelsea were wise in their vote. They didn't box themselves into Navidi original-only options. Some of the other old Navidi folks may be upset and want to target Dominic and Chelsea, like Kellen perhaps, but the wiser ones will adjust their play. In that regard, I'm cheering for Wendell. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, Judy. Great to have you back. Next up, got a call from Kenny. Hey, guys. It's Kenny from Unseasonably Cold and Rainy Dallas. I thought it was one of the better episodes of the season, or it's a reminder of why Survivor really is the best show on TV. I really did enjoy it. This stage of the game, take me at my word because I haven't been, my track record's not been so good. I think that Wendell and Kellen do have the best opportunity to advance. They've been given a very favorable edit, and I think they both really do have good game. Who's the next to go? Well, it looks like it's going to be a showdown between Dominic and our jock-like friend, and I think our jock-like friend is next to go. I think Dominic has more game. Uh, I will be sad to see him go because he has so much ego that it's going to be sad to see someone like that go. Same way was Bradley got his comeuppance, but it would have been nice if he stuck around, at least to be on the jury where he could. you have to see his face every time the other people walk in. Well, I think they should rename Ghost Island, Let's Make a Deal Island. And I think they should probably have the Ghost of Monty Hall come out, speaking of Ghost Island. These games are very much like Let's Make a Deal, What's Behind Door 1, 2, and 3. There's not much skill involved, but at least Kellen got to play a game, so I did enjoy that. And enough with these animal scenes, you know, which are native to the locale of the show, showing sharks around. Are they really having survivors go in the water where there are sharks uh, lurking nearby in the water? I hope not. You know what? They might as well show something uh, with animals where they show penguins uh, floating, you know, walking around and going into the water when they show survivors having to go in the water. 
They might as well show penguins. They might as well show polar bears. And when there's a tribal council, which is going to be really heated at night, they might as well show, this is more native to the islands they play in, they might as well show a volcano spewing lava and then showing them going to tribal council. You might as well see that. Well, I have to give kudos to the person who made the comment about uh, Picasso and the head, heart, mind, gut reference. I thought it was a very funny reference. Probably the funniest what I've heard on the feedback show. And how is Survivor like real life? Not much this past week. How is the podcast like real life? Gosh, I made a comment last week about going to the Duke uh, Final Four in 2004 and seeing Duke fall to Connecticut. But the game before that was Oklahoma State versus Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech won on the last play. And in between games, over the loudspeaker and the Alamo Dome, it said, is there a doctor in the house? We need help. So three or 400 of us ran over to this section where in the Georgia Tech section where this poor guy had passed out. We thought he was overcome by the win by Georgia Tech, but it turned out when he came to, he said he had been fasting for seven days and really had no strength left. He was wearing a Survivor buff, but I didn't put two and two together because I didn't know about the show at that time. Was it you, Stacy? Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs> no, no, it was not me. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kenny. Even though you went to Georgia Tech. Yeah, that's he was using that as part of his oh, story. Okay, I see. Yes, he's paying attention. He has good <clears throat> situational awareness. I see. Good job, Kenny. Next up, we got a call from Parker. It's Parker from Indiana. Oh, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> and I mean, Michael won that challenge for them. Yes. <laughs> But, yes, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And guess what, Stacy? That means he's not the curse of Ghost Island. Woohoo! I'm, <laughs> I'm going crazy right now. <laughs> I totally thought this would be Michael's episode to go home. Oh, no. But then, boom, right as the episode starts, Michael finds an idol, and it's this. It's Jason Stick. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's great. And then Wendell finds Eric's <laughs> individual immunity idol and I was like no way oh this episode was full of, of uh Micronesia <laughs> I love it I love it oh my goodness I love it so now Dominic has an idol and the legacy advantage Michael has an idol and uh, Wendell has an idol and Kellen has the extra vote I don't even care <laughs> I don't even care that Kellen has something. I'm so excited that like my three favorite people all have things. <laughs> this is the best. Oh my goodness. I love this season. I love this season. And the pagonging ended. <laughs> Woohoo! Bradley's gone. I'm I'm so hyped right now. And guess what? Do, do, I, did anybody cry this episode? <laughs> I don't think anybody was crying. It's the best! Yes! Yes! Oh my goodness. What a great episode. Finally see Bradley get his comeuppance. And it's, it's, it's amazing. It's awesome. I love it. Go Dominic. Team Dominic. Team Wendell. Team Michael. Team Libby. Team those people. <laughs> Everybody else. Yeah, they just need to do something and then I might get on their side. But right now, I'm definitely rooting for <laughs> Michael, Wendell, Dominic and Libby and so everything went right this episode except Kellen getting something but hey at least something happened on Ghost Island. I was hoping she'd lose her vote but whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah and then they burned the flag whatever and then they won the challenge and that's awesome and Michael won it for them. Don't forget about that. Michael won the challenge for them. I can't wait for him to go on an immunity streak. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I just, I'm so excited right now. And then next episode, we have the war between Chris and Dominic. I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh my goodness. That, that is going to be one awesome show. <laughs> go, go Dominic. All right. What a great episode. Uh, such a satisfying vote off. And, and uh, yeah, uh, see you guys next time. I think that young man liked that episode. Huh? I believe he think? did. Yes. Good deal. Thanks, Parker. Next up, we got an email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, it was nice to see the pagonging stop. Hopefully the merge will continue the trend. My other observations. Part of the bad juju at Malolo Beach must be the bad baby babysitter snoozing curse from last season. 
How else to explain the Navidi 3's lack of concern while Michael openly searched for and found the, I the hidden immunity idol? When Michael stuck the hidden immunity stick into his pants, I had flashbacks to, this is Spinal Tap. <laughs> I wonder if he plays bass guitar. <laughs> Last week, I opined that the only way to have believable fake idols this season was to imitate historic fakes like Ozzy Stick. Now it's a legit hidden idol. We may see my prediction come true if the stick gets played. Dom was more active riding the bench in the reward challenge than he was participating in the immunity challenge. He talks a good game. Ghost Island Casino's odds improved this week. I wonder what the other advantage was. I also wonder whether unclaimed advantages carry over into all future games, or if the second advantage was only available c because it was Kellen playing again. Ghost Island is the irregulars bin for old advantages. Everything there has, been, has had reduced abilities, while items found back on the beaches have had their original or extra powers. Bradley got hangry after his tribe won the food reward. Too bad the reward didn't include a Snickers bar. To keep things PG, I'll say that Bradley knows he can be a real duck. <laughs> now he's a dead duck. Chris says big guys like to eat. So do birds. Dodos come to mind. <laughs> I think someone <laughs> replaced the chicken kebabs with turkey. How else to explain the trip to fan coma Wendell's tribe was in while he found Eric's old idol? Yeah, it was awfully... It was a very convenient food coma for sure. Calling Wendell's necklace a hidden idol is like calling Mr. T's neck bling a few gold chains. Malolo was on fire after burning their banner. <laughs> That's bad. Dom's, Dom's dives reminded me of polar bears flopping into the water from ice flows. When Bradley graduates from law school, I can easily see him in a courtroom facing Perry Mason or Matlock. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. He's got that TV lawyer villain lawyer look for sure bradley played an old school game being the annoying guy nobody likes used to be a sure path to the final three next time battle lines are drawn at the merge plus chris thinks he's rico suave <laughs> anyway that's it for me for now thanks joanna stacy for all you do can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say thank you josh good job as always next up we got a call from jill Hi, Joanne and Stacey. Hi, Survivor Fanaticals. Joanne pretty much said exactly what I was thinking this week. I also had Bradley as my vote out because I wanted him out, not because I knew what I was doing at all. So happily to see him go, but I wonder if Libby was a better strategical choice. She's shown she will vote off an Alliance member and knows what she's doing. Where Brad was such a paint in the neck that I reckon he would have been the perfect you goat. I understand why they'd go for Bradley, though. When he clapped Jonathan to help him with the fire, I wanted to reach through the TV and smack him. So I can only imagination what they were all wanted to do, having lived with him. Uh, he really failed the test of not being a Richard. Thankfully, Ghost Island showed some promise this week. Helen had no reason not to play, and I was glad she picked the right one. Do you think it was the same advent in the other correct pod or a different one? It must have been a differential one. The actual vote parchment was in the one that she chose, right? I love mm -hmm. that they're using the effing stick as an idol and I'm glad Michael has it. And with Wendell as my ISP, I was happy that he found an idol too. Although that one is going to be a paint to keep secretive. Malolo made me laugh with their celebrations after the communal challenge. Not only was it getting boring seeing them at the same tribal councillor all the time, it was just good seeing the workings of another tribe. I've lost track of who was in the originally tri tribe, so it will be fun next week with the merge. Who's going to be aligning with who? So until next week, I'll go and play some volleyball and toss some rocks. Happy days, everyone, from Chris Noble in the Outback. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so that was Jill as Chris. All right, good deal. Thanks, Jill. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Night Nurse Jody. Hi, Survivor family. Oh, my God. I am so excited. This was an amazing episode. That funny-looking tree that Wendell found the clue for the idol beneath, that looked like a strangler vine to me. We have them here, so I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Oh, my gosh, I don't know how he's going to hide that big chunky noisy the big chunky necklace but yeah really really cool and the stick is back oh my goodness the effing stick how exciting and then Kellen's got the extra vote I thought that was interesting to risk a vote to get a vote because if she had have gone essentially there would have 
been no change for her if she'd needed that at Tribal, but very, very cool to have some little trinkets in the game now. I had chosen Michael to go home. I thought that was a lock. I thought Malolo could not break that curse, but the fire, it seems, did the job. And so I'm really glad to see that Michael's still in the game. I'm even more thrilled to see that Bradley's gone. They voted out the Tushi guy. Oh my God, how exciting. Yeah, just, just chuffed. So when Kellen came back from Ghost Island and she gets up on that platform, she kind of like ignored Michael on the way through. I think this is going to be a big flaw in Kellen's game, how she just sort of brushes people who she doesn't connect with. She doesn't make an effort to reach out and make connections. And I think that's going to be a big part of her not winning the game or just, just a flaw in her game. Anyway, so I'm all in now. Very excited for the merge. Do you think that Dominic is going to go ahead and play the legacy advantage at this coming tribal? That might be an excellent way to deflect any attacks that Chris might coordinate against Dominic. So I'm hoping that Dominic stays in, that Chris goes home, and yeah, can't wait. Okay, guys, bye. There you go, Shay. Jody nailed it. I would be surprised if he doesn't play it because um, he needs to see where everything's really going to fall. Who's really going to be with him and who's not. And this vote will tell. Yep. Yep. That too. Good deal. Thanks again, Jody. Next up, we got an email from Jack in California. This latest episode was filled with content. I would say this episode was an all-out idol palooza from beginning to end. I don't really believe that Malolo was actually cursed. They just are not great at the challenges. Watching them burn their tribal name was interesting to watch. With this being said, though, I'm glad to see another tribe go to tribal council and give Malolo a break. I remember when the stick immunity idol was first introduced, and I found it hilarious back then. But now that it's back and it's turned out to be an actual idol, I'm wondering how that would come into play. It would be really fun to see someone blindsided with the use of this idol. Speaking of idols, Wendell was playing a really great game and he found an idol necklace, which is now an immunity idol. I wonder how very hard to hide this one from the rest of the tribe. But Wendell seems to know what he's doing and I look forward to seeing how he plays it. Wendell is a gamer and if he is still around post-merge, I may choose him as my new USB. Ghost Island is back in play, and I hope it gets better from here. Sending Callan back to the island may be a smart choice to keep the mystery of the island under wraps. This time this time around, she did play the game and had an advantage instead of one shot. She played well, and to steal a vote could help her out in the game moving close to the merge. I'm not surprised to see Bradley go because he pushed everyone on his tribe the wrong way. When the tribe was talking, Bradley forced his tribe mates to help work and move things. His gameplay was not great, and I hope he learns from this mistake. All right, thanks, Jack. Up next, we have a voice clip from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. Well, that was just a super satisfying vote out. Sometimes the editors lead us down one path and just kind of blindside us from the thing that we really want to happen. But this time they teased us with an upset and gave us exactly what we wanted, which is Bradley being satisfyingly voted out and completely none the wiser to the fact that people actually had their sights set on him. Now, I don't think I would be a good survivor player at all. I'm pretty certain that I would crash and burn in some way, shape, or form. But if I were to play and to crash and burn, like I think I will, or would because I don't think I'm ever going to throw my hat in the ring there, if I were to play, I would not want to have the story arc that Bradley has had. The one who thinks they have it all dialed in, thinks that they're playing a perfect game, gets voted out thinking that, boy, those people voted me out because I'm such a strategic threat... And then months later, sit down and watch the edit and find out that I was an absolutely, completely annoying, condescending and argumentative tribe mate. That would just be the worst way to go out for me. Because I think it's hard to not have that self-awareness 
and then to be smacked in the face with it on national television. It makes me think of like Mailman Dan, who was so hard to live with out there on the island. Thought that he was voted out as a hero, only to find out that he was a major punchline of the season. So I think that better to be humble and self-aware than to go out like Bradley did. But nevertheless, it was a very satisfying vote out. We were cheering here at our house. Now we can look forward to Chris's vote out episode, whenever that may be. And okay, I know I'm going on a little bit too long about uh, the Bradley and Chris cringe-worthy behavior, but even though I wouldn't want to play like them, they're just so... I don't even want to call it fun to watch, but it, they do, in a weird way, make the show very interesting because while I would put Bradley in like the Russell mean-spirited camp, I just find Chris so coachy. And I've always really enjoyed watching Coach, because again, it's all about self-awareness here, but it's just so fun to watch in a cringy kind of way. But again, even as I sit and say this and mention how much I'm kind of enjoying the uncomfortableness and the weirdness of watching them, I do feel badly for them because I really don't like the concept of public humiliation on national TV. Anyway, in my last few minutes, I think I'll say that if I had to choose a new USB, I think I would choose Wendell, Laurel, or actually Donathan. I like Dominic, but he's going to get into it with Chris eventually. That's it for me. I'm finding it hard to make comments of any substance on strategy at this point because I'm embarrassed to say I'm still learning people's names. Anyway, can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say and hope everyone has having a great weekend. Bye. Ah, Thanks, Jen. Good job. Yeah, the schadenfreude. It's definitely examples of schadenfreude this season, that joy and the, the shade of someone else's bad fortune in that regard yeah a lot of that it's almost maybe there's a a new german word we can come up with there like the i don't know what what german is for cringe but it's like cringe and freude (laughs) it's your joy in the cringe worthiness of that particular castaway thanks jen next up we got a call from jeremiah hello joanna stacy hello survivor fans this is jeremiah panhorse here from southern california i have not left any feedback in a while so i figured you know what What a perfect episode to do so because Mm -hmm. this was a great one. I mean, so much excitement, so many goodies being found with two more idols. Uh, Finally, Ghost Island paying off. (laughs) It's been a while since we've seen that with Kellen getting an advantage. I'm loving it. It was great. And then we had the fantastic blindside by Bradley, which was wonderful. I got a, finally got a vote off point, which I will give all credit to Mike K. Saw his scenario that he wrote on Facebook and said, yep, that sounds like a good one. Let's go for it. <laughs> so I got a vote off point. So much greatness there. And so much to think about. You know, before the episode aired, I had wrote out, who do I think is going to win? So I decided to write out a new Final Four. And what I came up with makes a lot of sense, and even more so after seeing what happened in this episode, because I put down Dominic, Kellen, Wendell, and Michael is who I think is going to win this season. And then, of course, with Michael and Wendell, or with Wendell and Michael fighting idols, I'm telling you, this might play out pretty good. So I'm excited about what is going to happen coming up here with the merge. I think that things are going to start really heating up. Hopefully Ghost Island will continue to be a factor. Uh, It looks like maybe it will. Uh, And I know that that's what Jeff's been saying. That's going to be a factor all season long. So that's great. I I think we're going to finish off. I think this season is going to be an exciting finish. And uh, I like who is looking good this season. The, the people that I just mentioned, the four, I, I really do like a lot. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see how it plays out. Now, as far as next time on Survivor is concerned, uh, I, think, uh, I think this Chris and, and uh, Dominic battle will finally uh, take place. And I do feel like maybe Dominic will use that advantage and uh, get Chris out. I think this is uh, what we're looking at. I, I'm, I'm hoping for that'd be a great episode, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So that's my prediction for for next uh, episode. I I think uh, finally Chris will go home, uh, but who knows? I might change my mind. And last thing I want to add with these returning artifacts being used as idols, which I do love, by the way. But I've been hearing some other people talk about this, and I would have the same thought as well watching this episode when I saw Wendell get that big old necklace. You know. 
these old artifacts are very hard to hide. <laughs> Trying to put that one down your pants is going to be difficult. So if I only had one negative thing to say is <laughs> these some of these old uh, old idols are a little bit difficult to, to keep hidden. But outside of that, I'm still loving it, though. All right, well, I could add more, but that sounds pretty good to me. You guys take care, and I can't wait to hear what everybody else has to say. And again, this is Jeremiah from Southern California. Thanks, Jeremiah. Good job. Yeah, I like his uh, for choice other than I would substitute Laurel for Mm -hmm. Kevin. Yeah. Would be my preference. Yep, uh, I agree with that one. Yep, I can see that for sure. And, you know, maybe Chelsea too. I I had Chelsea in my final four, five-ish. Definitely see potential in her. Yeah. And they've just barely, the way that they've teased it out... And we're we're still getting good stuff from her in the extra videos too, mm-hmm. but she's just they're just giving us a little more, a little more, a little more taste of the what Chelsea's game's like. And yeah, I think she has, she's got potential. It's clear that her and Dominant were working together, and they put some serious thought in because that was a tough decision for them turning on Bradley. That that wasn't clear and easy when it came down to making that call. Yeah, it'd be interesting this week, too, to see where all the lines are drawn Mm -hmm. and who's with who. Looking forward to that, for sure. Yeah, I think it'll, they'll be, I think Chris will be devastated if he doesn't have a majority of people with him, although he's already gotten a little taste of how his tribe feels about him. (laughs) You can see how much of an impact that made. I still think he's clueless. Yeah, just like I, I seriously doubt Bradley would acknowledge, like Jen was referring to, how he was perceived by others i don't well of course they there's went a after certain me. i'm such a huge threat yeah there's a certain type of person that's never going to allow themselves to see how other people see them in that regard and as he's told us he loves to argue those points mm-hmm. so he would be more than happy to debate us on whether or not he was loved and respected by his tribe mates and feared to the extent that they needed to get rid of him that it wasn't just pure annoyance. Well, if he's going to be an attorney, he should love debate. Mm-hmm. So good for him. That should help him in his career. But I think there's might. a social oh. game there, just like there is. There's some work that I've been doing, and it just can't highlight it over the last couple of weeks. What a big social element there is. There's just technical components that are hugely important. But by the same token, if there weren't people taking care of this social part of it, which is a lot of sales and marketing kind of thing, it wouldn't, you know, nobody would get paid is what it comes down to. <laughs> if there weren't these people who had connections and they could go pur- purely on a social level because they don't comprehend the tech at all. They just don't have the first clue. They, they A general sense, maybe, but they, they don't. hire somebody that knows the tech. Right. But what they do is the the social part of the game. They do the same. And it, it just really, for whatever reason, over the last couple of weeks, that really was highlighted for me. Mm, and, cool. and that aspect of it in the realm where I am. I'm sh- sure I'm aware of it, but for whatever reason, it, it made it really bright and brought it to my attention, I, even though most of the time I'm totally consumed with the tech portion of it. And the people are kind of a something you have to manage. <laughs> Good deal. Well, you guys put together a fantastic listener feedback show. Thank you so much. We appreciate everybody sending in their thoughts and their predictions. And we want to say a big thanks to Jack Jackie 0003. Is that Jacqueline, you think? I would assume so. Yeah. For your review on iTunes, thank you so much for helping get the word out there. Also, big thanks to Jarrett and Christy for your donations. We use that. That money goes towards the podcast expenses, and we really appreciate your support. And if you're playing in our Fantasy League, don't forget to get your picks in before the deadline on Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific time. Merge, 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 merge. Merge, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how all this plays out. See where the new lines are. Well, you know what's actually kind of nice for this season is that I don't have to decide whether to keep my USB or not. <laughs> okay. Because usually I struggle with that. So <laughs> now I don't have to worry about that. There. I have to choose something. Life has made it easy for it you. It's made it easy for there me. There you go. 
All right. May life make it easy for you, too. Have a good one.